You didn't? The assembly resumes its sitting. Does any other member wish to? The member from yes. Barton Town West. Barton Town West. West Bay now, Mr. Speaker. Sorry? I thought you, I thought you wanted me out of West Bay. You don't know a little bit too much, yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's right, too. Mr. Speaker, um, on behalf of the official opposition, I want to rise to endorse what the Premier said earlier. Um, I think it's important for the country to recognize that there are some issues in this country that should be beyond politics. And our financial services industry, our tourism industry, education, health care, to name a few, are definitely one. As you can see tonight, Mr. Speaker, the opposition on this side voted unanimously with the government to support their budget as proof positive that there should be some things that should be beyond politics. One of the things I want to stress, Mr. Speaker, and I think it's important for the Caymanian public to understand exactly how our financial services industry work briefly. I won't get into all the technical stuff, but just to kind of give you an idea. Because many times we have heard batted around the story that if we can take one cent from every dollar that passes through Cayman or anything like that, the country be rich. I think it's important for the public to know that the money doesn't pass through the Cayman Islands at all. I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, as a former banker, who have seen a balance sheet grow from over 200 million to 2 billion, that the only amount of money that was in the Cayman Islands was only the money that we actually had inside the vault, which at that time was around a million dollars. And the thing about it is, Mr. Speaker, why I say that is, and just to kind of put things in context for the listening public, if you are home at night and you see a nice commercial on TV, advertising some magic sleep potion down in Australia, and you decide you want to buy it buy it via a wire transfer. That process entails you go into your bank, a local bank, and you get the banking instructions and you wire the money to that bank. What is actually missing from that process is that the money never leaves your bank, nor the money ever received by, say, the bank in Australia. What normally happens is your bank would have a clearinghouse bank in the U.S., probably the bank in New York or one of them, and the other bank that is also receiving the money on behalf of their client would also have a clearing bank account at the Bank of New York. And the only instructions is the local bank would say to the um, bank in New York, take money from my account and put it into that account. And then the Bank of New York would say to the Australian bank, Somebody just put money in your account. This is what it's for. This is one of your clients. Nothing touches the Cayman Islands. Nothing moves. The only money that we have in the Cayman Islands, Mr. Speaker, is literally the money we have in circulation. So I kind of find it a little bit, I guess, weird sometimes when people talk about all this money in the Cayman Islands, when in fact, the money that they're talking about have never really left their jurisdictions. On paper, based on ownership, the money may be here, but... Outside of that, the money has never, ever set foot in the Cayman Islands barring physical cash. And it's important for the public to know that when you're saying things about taxing one cent that passes through. It doesn't pass through. It's, it has always remained onshore in the United States, in North America, in Europe, and elsewhere in Asia. Mr. Speaker, earlier this year, I think people may remember the documentary that the last one, I think it was Britain's Trillion Pound Paradise or something like that, that people was up in arms about. And yeah, well, so, yeah, thanks, even thing there. And what's missing from that is actually the title, Britain's Trillion Pound Paradise. And I say that, Mr. Speaker, for a simple reason. Whether we want to accept it or not, and I think it's important for the public to know, that Britain itself, the UK, and elsewhere make more money from the Cayman financial industry than the Caymanian people actually do themselves. And i give you an example, Mr. Speaker. About maybe a year ago, there was a big legal case that was concluded in the Cayman Islands in which the legal fees was around a million dollars. A UK, a QC from the UK came in 
and he did all the nice fancy work. The silk, I think, as they refer to him. Of that million dollars in fees, Mr. Speaker, 500,000 around that went to Her Majesty's Treasury, I think Inland Revenue. Another 300,000 went to the UK attorney, and 200,000 went to the firm that brought him here. The only thing we made from that, Mr. Speaker, I think was around $1,500 from the work permit fee. Not even the hotel accommodation tax we got, simply because he had a work permit and he didn't have to pay that. $1,500, $1 million in fees. $1,500 is what the Caymanian people got from it. So it's important, Mr. Speaker, for people to recognize, and I think this has been one criticism of the financial industry in that it has never done enough to really educate the public nor give enough people to show its impact to the country. Because I've sometimes hear people say, you know what, to hell with the financial industry. Not recognizing how the money flows or how it flows through our economy via consumption and via development. So, Mr. Speaker, it is important for us to recognize that the Cayman Islands does have a place to play in offshore financial center. And what is actually missing from many of these countries, Mr. Speaker, is that they fail to recognize that it is the failings of their own tax system. It is their own socialist policies in a globalized world that have basically generated the business coming to the Cayman Islands and elsewhere. You know, this is their own citizens basically saying, you know what? We are not happy with the tax system that we have. Now, I can tell you one thing that we should be looking at is probably the, the, the proposed Republican tax plan that's similar to what Canada has done where they have allowed Canadian, Canadian subsidiaries to repatriate funds back home without paying taxes on it. That naturally would be um, a, a something more, I guess, damaging to the Cayman Islands with regards to capital flows. But Mr. Speaker, what really moved myself and members of the opposition is to see the Premier stand firm. And I really must commend him that twice now in two days, I've seen him taking a position that I've, I must say I'm proud of him in that regard. I also accept, Mr. Speaker, that in his role as Premier, he has to be a little bit more cautious and more guarded with his words, whereas we on that side, well, sorry, we on this side doesn't have that problem. So I'll go as far as to say something I think the Premier didn't want to say, but I will say on his behalf. If at the end of the day, they decide to blacklist us, all of those countries that we have TIA disagreements with, that have chosen to blacklist us despite the fact of knowing that we are transparent and we are open to do business, then we should look at canceling some of those agreements because what's the use of us bending our backs over, chasing 8% of businesses, and then at the same time run the risk of losing 92% of the business? What do you want? Yeah, yeah, no, we're on the same page here. So the reality of it is, Mr. Speaker, the EU is dead. You know what I mean? And we need to recognize that the OECD and many of those countries want the Cayman Islands out of this business. Mr. Speaker, my uncle George McCarthy um, defended the Cayman Islands as much as he can on many government missions. And two of my own representatives in Bordentown, uh, Mr. Roy Bard and Mr. Gilbert McLean, also told me a story where they were told point blank in no uncertain terms, get out, the Cayman Islands should get out of the financial services business. Well, Mr. Speaker, I'm here to tell many of those countries on behalf of the opposition side and maybe some on the government side that we have survived more than 20 years of attacks. We have survived Tony Blair. We have survived Gordon Brown. We have survived eight years of Bill Clinton. We have survived eight years of Barack Obama and we will survive whoever else they come because we are doing nothing wrong except taking advantage of a globalized world that has become smaller through technology and capital flows. So, Mr. Speaker, I think it's important for all in Sundry to know that this is one issue in which both the government and the opposition is united. We cannot afford for our islands that we, many people have worked very hard to build, very hard to have given us the success that we have today, that while even when our own sister territories had problems and the UK wouldn't help them, 
we were still in a position to do what the UK should have been doing because of the, the economy that we have built. So, Mr. Speaker, I know uh, members are anxious to, um, to go, but let it be known that we are one of the largest offshore financial centers. We have been at the forefront. We have sacrificed much and we have given much. And every single goalpost that they have given us, we have passed and they keep moving the goalposts. And at some point, we'll have to say enough is enough and say no more. So, Mr. Speaker, through you to the Premier and his government, we stand united with you, sir, in this regard. And anything that we can do to help in this regard, we're here to support you. But this is one thing that we want everyone to know, that we are unanimous in our position and that the position that the Premier have taken. Thank you all and good night. Any other member wish to speak? Member for Georgetown Central. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to, to add my contribution to the subject matter that we're discussing and also to agree with my colleague who just gave his contribution, the member for Bontown West. And supporting this government, the minister and the premier in respect to their approach in dealing with the unfortunate matter in respect to the Paradise Papers. I agree, I agree with the Honorable Premier in respect to his analysis that this seems to be an indirect attack of our industry in a malicious way um, and simply on the basis of trying to accuse us of doing wrongdoings when the truth in fact is they're just trying to take away our business. Um, I think this is the time that we as, as members should unite, like my colleague said, from Bontown West. And I want to encourage the public, all the voters, all the Caymanians, to support the government on this matter. They need all the blessings that they can get from every corner of these lovely islands. Um, it's not a time for politics. I want to say that I am proud of the Premier, the Minister and the government's stance in respect to the handling of this. And we as a country, as a nation, as a people, have to stand together and give the government our full support because this is one of our, our strongest pillar of our economy and it's important to our livelihood. But like um, the member from Bontong West has suggested, we will get through this as well. So that being said, I'd like to continue to give my full support to the government in respect to this matter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Any other member wish to speak? Any other member wish to speak? If not, I call upon the mover to exercise a right of reply. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I certainly understandably wish to thank members for their spirited contribution to the, the debate on the bill. Um, and just to add, Mr. Speaker, that maybe the supreme irony of all of what has been happening um, in terms of the threats is that when you listen to those who are running for offices elsewhere in other countries, they all campaign on who can lower taxes the most. They all do that. Yeah. The whole campaign on that. So, Mr. Speaker, I certainly thank honorable members for their contribution to the bill. Thank you. The question is that a bill shortly entitled The Proceeds of <coughs> Crime, Proceeds of Crime, the Amendment Bill 2017, is given a second reading. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those against, the ayes have it. The Proceeds of Crime Amendment Bill 2017 has been given a second reading. The House will now go into committee to consider Mr. Mr. Speaker. the various bills. With your permission, sir, if I might. Mr. Speaker, I've been prevailed on by members on both sides of the House um, to adjourn following the passage of, of the last bill. And Mr. Speaker, in 
an effort to preserve the spirit of goodwill, <laughs> harmony, and, gener and generosity which currently obtains, I, I am prepared to accede on the basis of the discussion I had with the Honorable Leader of the Opposition that we will take the balance of government business first tomorrow before we proceed to the private members' motions. And so, sir, with your permission, I move the adjournment of this Honorable House until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. The question is that this Honorable House stands now adjourned until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. All in favor? Those against?